Hello everyone, welcome to a special CUBE conversation here at theCUBE's Palo Alto Studios. I'm John Furrier. Join with me for this special CUBE conversation. Stu Miniman with Wikibon and theCUBE co-host as well, just up at Amazon Web Services Summit. Uh, Stu, great, great to see you again. Our next guest is Ben Golub, who's the executive uh, chairman and interim CEO of Store J, pronounced storage. <laughs> so it's a, it's a really hot uh, cryptocurrency blockchain based um, storage solution, I should say decentralized storage, not necessarily yeah, cryptocurrency, yeah. but tokens are involved, yeah, yeah. encryption. Great to see you. Great to see you, it's just Formerly good to be Formerly Docker back. CEO, and uh, yeah. now advising at Mayfield Fund, it's a venture partner, and yeah. also interim CEO of a hot. Of a, of, yeah, really exciting company, and I think uh, I'm really excited to talk to you about it today. Because, uh, so let's just jump into it. So obviously yeah. the ICO craze is, is, is awesome, and you know we've always speculated mm -hmm. that you know the blockchain and the decentralized uh, yeah. applications are coming, uh, is going to be the real action, but yet the, it's going to create efficiencies where it's inefficient. Sure, sure. And our venture capital is one of them, and that's why the ICO craze is going. People are raising a, a boatload of money that they probably wouldn't have gotten. Wouldn't have amount. gotten, yeah, no dilution, things like that. So, so it's, it's interesting, us, yeah, yeah. Give us an update on, on Store J or Storage. Yeah. How much an ICO they raise, white paper's out there, it's peer to peer. Give a quick take yeah. a minute to explain what, what the company's doing. Yeah, well, I, mean, I guess I'd sort of probably start by saying that I think that. Uh, blockchain is bigger than just cryptocurrency and decentralized is bigger than, than blockchain and, and storage is primarily a decentralized storage company, right? Um, so we're about decentralized apps and the whole thing would absolutely work even if uh, we were just using dollars. Um, but I think it does make it a whole lot more exciting, right? And so the, the company kind of unique in the, now unique in the sort of crypto space in that we actually had a running service that was providing real value before we did the large token sale. Uh, and the token sale raised uh, about thirty million dollars. You know, fortunately, uh, they took about ten of that in, or kept about ten of that in Ethereum and Bitcoin, which rose up. So you know, there's yeah. a, a good deal more than that in Hopefully the bank account right now. They convert to fiat currency, and then they converted to fiat along the way, right? Good. So, well, it was so, an all-time um, high of twenty thousand. Now it's yeah, like seven thousand. So, yeah, so. yeah. So uh, you know, you didn't sell everything at the at the peak, <laughs> but you know, didn't sell it. Yeah. So, so we we've yeah. been having many blockchain and, and yeah. uh, crypto or token-based yeah. economic kind of things, but. The real, real question is, okay, what's happening? Now we know the action's been on the infrastructure side. If you look right. at all, um, you know, all the top uh -huh. hedge funds, Polychain yeah. and amongst others, they love these deals because it's infrastructure. Yeah. Is that where the action is? And, 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 and how are you yeah. guys looking at that? Because at the same time, there's a wave of decentralized applications, also known as dApps coming right, on. Right. So there's a, there's a relationship going on between how fast the infrastructure can go. Right. And right. then how applications are going to work with either yeah. on-chain or off-chain dynamics. Sure, sure. So maybe maybe it'd be helpful to sort of give you a sense of, of what it is that we do, because uh, I, th I think that if you if you do that, then I think it makes sense in the context of decentralized infrastructure, decentralized apps, but also actually traditional uh, infrastructure as well. So, you know, I've always been searching for a company that I could describe at Thanksgiving. You know, I've never succeeded, so I always end up saying that I'm in, in computers and fixing somebody's printer. Uh, but, um, you know, I guess, I guess you know, at, if I were to describe storage uh, at Thanksgiving, I'd say it's basically the Airbnb of storage, or the Airbnb of disk drives. So, you know, Airbnb, people have lots of, uh, you know, condos or vacation properties that aren't being used all the time, and so, you know, Airbnb brings them together, people who want to rent those, and, you know, they're the largest hotel company in the world without owning a single property. And we're kind of doing the same thing with storage in that there are, uh, you know, there is, first of all, there's this explosion in the amount of data that's getting created. You know, it would fill a stack of uh, CD-ROMs to Mars and back uh, this year. Um, yet the price of cloud storage hasn't come down. And 90% of all the disk drives that are out there, or sorry, uh, are only about 10% utilized. So, seems like a, like a solution, uh, uh, you know, it's a problem that, that needs a solution. And that's what we've done. We basically brought together a very large network of individuals and companies that have spare storage capacity and match them up with uh, people who need storage. The really cool aspect, or the many cool aspects about it, um, but you know, one of them is that basically, if you want to store on the storage network, um, we take your file, you encrypt it, so we never hold the keys, you encrypt it, it's all scrambled up, we break it up into you know, between 20 and 80 pieces and we spread those out across the 150,000 or so nodes that we have in our network. So uh, it's super cheap, but it's also super secure. Um, great performance because the data is way out at the at the edge, um, and super available because you know, you know, there's no storm or power outage or you know, idiot tripping over a power cord that can take out 
take out your storage. Uh, so, so Ben, you know, yeah. you, you touched on, you know, first question I was going to ask, of course, yeah. you know, trust and security, storage. Yeah. I absolutely have to worry about. So, sound like they, yeah. that, that's at the core. But there, there's a number of dynamics going yeah, on yeah, in the yeah, industry. Yeah. You know, object storage was, you know, great. Let's, you know, yeah, spread yeah. it out. Let's make it more decentralized. But most of the kind of core storage industry, it's, you know, speeds and feeds and latency is super important. And right. even when you start getting to distributed architecture, I, I worry about that latency. So yeah. what are kind of the use cases? What are some of the, yeah. the, the key customer issue? Is is price a big piece of it? Or, you know, yeah. what, what, what solutions does, you sure. know, storage sure. solve that uh, well, others well, can't? You know, I, you know, I always said that said when I was at Cluster, which was a storage company, you know, yeah. that there were sort of four things that mattered in storage, right? Uh, you know, there was certainly price, uh, there was security, as in, I don't want anybody to be able to access it. There's availability, and that I never want to, to drop or lose files. And finally, there's performance, you know, how fast I can get at it. And so, for um, a huge range of use cases that involve files, <laughs> basically everything that, that object storage is kind of used for today, um, the design of our system is actually much better, right? Um, because you've, you know, because we've encrypted it locally and then spread it out, um, you really can't attack it, right? I mean, first of all, you'd have to figure out, so a would-be attacker who wanted to find one of your files uh, in the storage network would have to figure out which of the 80 or the 20 nodes out of 150,000 it's located on. Uh, if they found one of those and they got, uh, got you know, the, the small portion of the file that's there, they wouldn't be able to do anything with it because it's encrypted, and even if they were to, uh, somehow able to decrypt it by stealing the key from you, not from us. Uh, so encryption and immutability. And immutability, cool. right, right. So you get, you get all of that um, and so for the security piece, it's great. For the availability piece, i.e., you know, never lose a file, it's really, really good, right? Uh, because if you just look at the math, right, the chances that somehow, you know, we, you could basically lose 10 out of 20 nodes and still be able to recover your files. And, you know, all of our nodes are run by different people, different power supply. So let's <laughs> take a step back. So, 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 and you guys, how many nodes are on the network now, you said? So 150,000 now. Uh, run by 70,000 farmers is what we call them, right? So they're not, they're not miners, because they're not just solving math problems, they're actually <laughs> producing something of value, right? Uh, uh, 70,000 farmers, and then we have, on the network right now, over 50 petabytes of data, which is a really large amount, <laughs> um, and yet we don't run a, a single data center. Did you guys have raised any venture at all? Is it all ICO proceeds? Um, so there was a, a small seed round that was done, sort of before the uh, ICO craze, uh, but uh, other than that, it's, it's uh, Great. It's all and how many people are working on the company? Up uh, to 25. So 25. you guys are at the, like a classic startup, and now the working product, yeah. how does that look like now? Is it yeah. on the blockchain, is it off the chain? How's it working? Uh, yeah, yeah, so Bitcoin. the, um, so, well, so, um, you know, I sort of described to you what the product does, mm -hmm. right, and uh, so far nothing that I've described to you involves blockchain. Um, the way the economics work is that as, uh, as, a, as a user, somebody wants to store on our network, you know, you can, we quote a price in dollars, you can either pay us in dollars or in the storage token. Mm -hmm. And as a farmer, you get compensated with the storage token. And that's done, of course, using, using blockchain. We're actually part of, uh, uh, of Ethereum. Um, and um, Is we're- that an ERC-20 so, ERC-20, token? yeah, yeah the ERC-20 okay. token. Um, there are also interesting things, though, that we are working on using blockchain for things like you just mentioned, right? Data integrity, so I can make sure that uh, let's say if I'm doing a snapshot of a data of a database, and I want to make sure that it, it is exactly what it is, nobody can tamper with it, et cetera, then that's a perfect use of blockchain. But using blockchain for the stuff I was talking about before, like figuring out where the shards are and making sure that they're uptime and reliable, that's actually stuff where blockchain isn't the best answer. Yeah. Yep. Ben, c c tell us a little bit about kind of the, c the customers that you find there, because yeah. you know, storage administrators. Yeah, that role's been changing a lot. But the typical storage administrator, if you tell them, "Oh yeah, I'm doing some you know distributed thing somewhere yeah, else yeah. and paying in cryptocurrency," they'd be like, are, "Are you kidding me? I want this thing that I can lock and hold yeah, and you know absolutely. guard with a gun." <laughs> look, uh, so. I mean, look, there's 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 uh, you know I think I think this is like any anything else, right? There's 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 uh, an adoption curve, right? And right now it's clearly very much early adopters, yeah. and actually sort of similar to Docker and similar to cloud in general it's developers who are leading the way, right. right? So developers are saying, oh wow, I can write to the storage network in the same way that, you know, I would have written to S3, only it's cheaper for many use cases, more performant, uh, and, and not centralized, right? So I'm not trusting, you know, one cloud provider. So for certain use cases, this is, uh, this is fantastic. Are there right? certain cloud native apps that you're finding, you know, have strong affinity here? Um, 
Yeah, so basically what, 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 we, what we have Affinity with right now, um, you know, and let's be clear, this is early, right? <laughs> this is early days, so um, you know, I wouldn't recommend that people store their most sensitive data uh, <laughs> on this, uh, as in, uh, but... Um, not Oracle certified yet is what you're we're saying. We're not Oracle certified, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah but, but basically anything that's involving a large file that you're not writing to very frequently, but you're reading a lot, mm -hmm. right? Or that's getting read by lots of people around the world, we're a really good solution. That's one of the things I think I mentioned to you. So we've got 150,000 nodes. They're located in, I think it's now 180 countries, right? And all over the US, right? So, so that if, if you want to get your data close to the edge, like if, you're, if you, the people who are consuming your data, right, are really close to the edge, this is actually really good. And because it's spread across so many, you get the benefit of parallelism. So it's super fast, in addition to being super safe and super secure. How, do the farm, how does it work for the farmers? Because, yeah. you, know, one, you know, we have video files, so we would love to like spread yeah. our video files on the storage aid network, storage yeah. network. So, yeah. um, let's just say that I, I do a special deal for you yeah, too. Of you course, know? yeah, get a little token action going on both sides, yeah. cube coins. Yeah. Uh, the, but if yeah. the availability thing's concerned. Is it whose computers are being stored on? Is it yeah. extra capacity? Is it servers? Is it my yeah, people's yeah, home I computers? Mean, and um, you know, what, what's the, is it like a, sure. that kind of model or? Sure, so, so basically yeah, we, we you know, just as Airbnb measures reputation, we measure reputation too, right? And so, if you don't have a good reputation, certain characteristics, we won't, we won't send data to you. And so, what it basically means is, you know, you've got to have, you know, dedicated hardware and a dedicated connection, right? Um, uh, so, we do have people who are, you know, who are running things in their home, but it's, you know, it's not a laptop, right? It's not yeah. on a laptop, it's not on your phone, right? But, you know, but if you have a disk drive that, that's connected with reasonably high capacity and uh, reasonably well connected, right, then you'll establish good reputation. Um, but what we are seeing is we're actually seeing a lot of uh, universities, a lot of small businesses, some data center operators who have spare capacity and actually, or just want to use us like as, be both a farmer and a user, right? So, mm -hmm. back up and, and get stuff on their capacity, which is a good idea. Um, and interestingly enough, we also are getting a lot of people who were Bitcoin miners and bought equipment, which is good quality equipment, but there's such an arms race yeah, in, yeah. in doing that, right? So they so abandoned it because it was too hard for them to make It's too coins. hard to make money, right? And, yeah. and you know, very expensive specialized equipment. And in our case, basically high quality, you know, general high quality equipment uh, works well. What's the uh, profit model? What's how, how do the farmers make money? So if yeah. I'm going to say my take our Q videos as an example, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm paying you guys, and you're distributing you're, you're, those you're tokens. Us and we're, uh, with well, so you're, you're paying tokens. us again. You're paying us either in dollars or uh, or or tokens, mm -hmm. um, and then farmers get compensated in tokens. And right now, about sixty cents on every dollar goes to the farmers, um, and you know farmers uh, uh, get more uh, get more storage uh, based off of their reputation. And you know we charge people based on both how much you're storing as well as sort of how much bandwidth egress that you're doing, um, and we compensate farmers exactly the same way. And so that's handled through, through consensus protocol you guys have. Yeah, or? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the so the payment is and and uh, the payment and assessing reputation we actually use sort of just good distributed blockchain as well there, right? So so you're not de counting on on storage to <laughs> uh, to to be in the middle there. Um, now with the remaining. 40 cents, which I think is actually the really interesting part. So obviously, you know, we keep some of that, we put some of it back into the network. Um, but what I'm really excited about is that this is now a way for us to economically empower demand partners as well, right? So uh, the first one we announced was FileZilla, but you know, we have lots of other open source projects waiting in the wings and we're happy to, yeah. to, to share with them, right? So as opposed to centralized cloud, where it's really hard to make money as, a, uh, as an open source company or an open source project in our case, right? We're happy if you're sending us users and data to give you a really meaningful percentage. Any kind of freemium model you guys playing with? I, mean, I can imagine this being pretty interesting because S3 yeah. democratized and yeah. lowered the cost barrier, obviously with yeah, cloud. Yeah, no, I mean, S3 so is, you know, has, has been great for many things. You know, uh, How low are you I mean, in terms of the disruption? You guys are going to probably have to come in and undercut S3, is that the strategy or is that the price value? Well, I mean, look, I, I, you know, I, I think, I think you know, what I learned from, from my time in storage is price is important, uh, but you have to be really safe and available and reliable, yeah. right? Because people's data is really important. But um, so, you know, but we, we looked in across a pretty broad set of use cases, you know, and comparing us to the traditional cloud providers, uh, you know, we're probably a third. Uh, and and uh, we could go lower. Um, what I think is really interesting in our case is that the economics just work really well. So for the most part, if you're a farmer, you've already got you know, this is spare capacity. You don't need to, any more electricity to run this thing. 
you, you know, you, you've got your bandwidth, right? You don't need to hire any more people. So it's, it's almost pure margin for a farmer, which is great for them. Yeah. Uh, and so we can give economic value to farmers and give economic value to our customers. We can give economic value to partners. Um, and uh, any kind of like economic models you can share in terms of like yeah. what someone would make. Let's just say that you know I had you know this uh, big yeah. music library that's not used, being used anymore, and I had. Well, so I mean, as, as a customer, of course, if you if you've got data that you we want to store on our network, right, you'll you'll save a lot of money, right? And and it sort of you know probably you know a third of what you might pay. Uh, for but is there any kind of like trigger? If I'm a farmer, I want to join the. But network. But if you're a farmer, right? How much um, am I going to make? So it really depends on how much you're storing and uh, how much. Uh, uh, you know, and how good your connection is, but you know, as as a farmer, I think you can uh, you can make decent money. I mean, you know, this could probably be I don't know off the top of my head, for, you know, twenty thirty dollars a month uh, per for drive, which isn't bad, um, and certainly much easier than uh, than making money. So it kind of depends, like the Airbnb model, but how well yeah. you're using. How well you're used, right? I mean, you know, so some people will earn less, some people will earn more, um, and. Uh, uh, but and again, for most of the farmers, this is pure pure margin. Great. We got a couple back back rooms too. We should get some drives up there and get well, on. Yeah, we're get we're on happy, board. We're we get happy paid for the cameras. Yeah. <laughs> and, and look, I mean, I think for for videos, right? And you guys would actually be a perfect use case uh, um, for um, you know with a lot of the stuff that's going to be coming out later this year, right? It, you know, you get both storage and sort of see the end like things for free, right? Uh, in the sense that it's because. Well, I'm really glad you brought that up. I want to ask you about yeah. video coin because Halsey Miner has video coin, another ICO. He raised 50 yeah. million. Yeah. Uh, we covered that on Silicon Angle. And, but he's trying to democratize like Akamai. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, look, is I. Is that I, similar to what you guys are. Well, I mean, I guess if you just say, you know, we're, 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 we're further democratizing uh, object storage, right? So democratizing S3, but, you know, I think we can also democratize uh, Akamai. Um, uh, they're sort of, you know, democratize Isilon, right? I mean, there's certain other really exciting things yeah, here. What other services? You, you, you mentioned CDN, so it's not just storing the information, but that global dispersion. Well, it, 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 yeah, I mean, the, you know, it used to be, I think that people had a, you know, there's a really big difference between archival, uh, which is, you know, slow, hard to get at, and yeah, CDN, pleasure. right? Yeah. And, you know, and, but actually, given the way that we're doing this thing, we can be pretty seamless, right? You know, pay archival, like, uh, for stuff that's staying in archival, but, you know, uh, go up market if you're going to be, uh, you know, having a lot of people read it. So I got to ask you about the um, how to go security. You're looking for yeah. additional services around redundancy. I can see that yeah, yeah. being being a nice headroom for you. Yeah. Um, on a personal note, you've been involved in a lot of um, yeah. industry uh, companies that have done very well yeah, and yeah. had entrepreneurial success. Why am I doing um, <laughs> this? Is, I mean, I can tell you're having fun. We, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, how, how could you not have fun? It's yeah, a yeah, yeah. whole nother whole nother, generation yeah, yeah, of yeah, innovation yeah. and disruption coming at a whole nother sure, price sure. point. So, you know, I'll see, um, what's it like? Are you having fun? And and if you could, if you could talk to your 22 year old self right now, because I wish I was 22 right now in this market. You're saying I'm not 22? What, what would you, how do you explain yeah. this? To, and, and when you go to parties, even in the Valley, and people say, man, you're crazy, it's a freaking scam out there. How do you explain to them this revolution? Because yeah. this is like a special, unique wave. Yeah. What's your, how would you talk Well, about I mean, that? actually, I sort of describe it the same way that, uh, to people in the Valley, right, sort of the same way that I described at the beginning, right, which is that, um, you know, blockchain is bigger than cryptocurrency, uh, and decentralized is much bigger than blockchain. And storage is first and foremost decentralized. It's about decentralized computing, decentralized storage, supporting decentralized apps, keeping the you know the internet from ending up in the hands of just three uh, people, right? Which is which is uh, you know three companies, which I think is is, is really important. Um, but also, I feel very good that um, to the extent that that storage does touch on cryptocurrency, that we've done it the right way. Yep. You know, we we had the service working first before we. <laughs> We did the token sale. Yeah. We raised what now appears to be a modest amount in the token sale, yeah. right? We tried to be very transparent and at the forefront. You probably could have gotten more if you wanted to. Probably, right? Yeah. But we're trying to be at the forefront uh, in terms of governance and transparency. Um, and and look, I, I think that you know it'll probably be a good thing if uh, you know just as it's kind of a good thing that uh, that the bubble burst in the late '90s, right? And you got rid of a lot of of sort of not such great companies and not such great operators. You know, I, I think that, um, you know, the current uh, 
corrections or whatever in, in, in the crypto market, oh. I think we'll, we'll lay a little this well, Pets.com is gone, but Dogecoin still exists, so. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm, look, I'm sure that somebody has a crypto-based Pets.com, right, or web van lurking in the wings somewhere, but uh, so I gotta ask, Kodak just did it, you know. So like, I got to yeah. ask you, because um, yeah. you're super smart, you went to yeah. some really good school, I think Princeton, Harvard Business School. Yeah, yeah. So you got a good education. Yeah. Um, so I got to get your take on the whole token economics yeah. vision, because this is, sure. I mean, if you look at outside the tech trends, there's actually new economic models that are coming out. Right. If you look at the token as economics, new liquidity on the on, on one side, you got sovereignty, you got consensus. These are not just tech issues, this is society issues. So no, what's, no. Your, what's your vision around that? How do you, how do you, how do you viewing it? What's the upside? How is this shaping the future? Yeah, look, I mean, I think, I think if you're a token network, um, you sort of have to have some central bank uh, <laughs> Uh, chops as well, right? Uh, and we, we actually, we have a, an ex-central banker. Uh, so you have a chief uh, economic officer? So we don't, uh, no, we have, we, have advisor, we have an advisor, right? I mean, I, I actually had a degree in public policy at one point, but, um, but no, I mean, listen, we need to think about, you know, the token supply in the same way you think about the money supply, right? We're, we're backed by something real. Uh, so it's sort of like having, you know, currencies backed by gold, right? Um, we, uh, you know, we need to make sure that the, the market grows, right, and the network grows, and you know, my, my fundamental belief is that the more the network grows, the more people use it, the more value that we are able to provide, um, that'll be good for token economics in the long run. In the short run, though, I mean, what we've done is, again, we price, uh, we price based off of dollars, mm -hmm. and we compensate farmers based off of the token, based off the, the spot price, right? So, so for farmers, we've sort of tried to remove any need to worry about volatility or, uh, you know, so I want to get your like reaction. Yeah. So I, I've said on the cube, or the uh, price. Right. I, I said on the cube a couple multiple times that in the old days of venture startups, uh, the CTO was everything. You had to get great CTO or VP of engineering right. and great senior uh, executive team on the entrepreneurial team. Now it's almost like the chief economic officer is a critical <laughs> yeah, piece no, it's interesting, because yeah. you got public policy intersecting with yeah. economics. You got uh, new kinds of math. That's not technical algorithm, but it's kind of uh, business algorithms. It is. Look, it's both business algorithms, right? I mean, if, you know, just like any economy, right? I mean, you know, the money supply matters, right? And people's trust in that uh, in that money matters, right? And the supply matters, all that sort of stuff like that, and and stability matters. So I think I think absolutely, this new breed of of network based token companies will have to worry about that, uh, and probably should think about it, chief economics officer. But it doesn't mean that you don't also have to great CTO yeah, and great technology yeah. and things like that, because that's how you make the, the network valuable and grow. And you know, I one of the reasons that sort of gave me both excitement and comfort about going to storage is that the economic model works fundamentally even if the crypto's not there. Yeah, yeah. Because technology and it's just decentralized. It's decentralized storage makes yeah. sense even if you're uh, buying and selling it with dollars or pounds or rubles or whatever. Well, Ben, great to see you. Thanks yeah. for coming in and sharing the. We're going to soon go to the Ben Golub School of Economics. Public policy for, for tokens. <laughs> you give a class at Stanford on that soon, although it's the different uh, the competition oh, school. Maybe, yes, yeah. slightly different. Yeah. <laughs> we, we still like that, yeah. Great so, to see you. Hey, hey. congratulations. Um, Thank you. Store J, uh, pronounced storage. Um, great, successful ICO. Hot startup, really an example of the infrastructure opportunities of a new decentralized infrastructure that can be and will soon, we think, it will be critical infrastructure in a whole new way. Great to, great to see you. Hey, really good to see you. Great, All to, right. uh, great to be back on the This is a CUBE Conversation. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. Thanks for watching.